Hello, Grayson College faculty. Today, Regan and I are going to talk to you a little bit about our Big Blue Button conferencing tool that allows live conferences in Canvas and allows you to record and replay videos that you've made in Canvas, such as lectures you may be doing. Uh, Big Blue Button is already integrated into Canvas and it's easier to use in Zoom. We first started using Big Blue Button the summer of 2020 when COVID moved us all into online and we now have premium subscription to it. So that premium subscription allows uh, your videos to be permanent and it allows us a premium level of support. Uh, before we had the premium support, the videos only had two weeks to be viewed by students and then they would disappear. But now your videos are permanent in, in, in a sense that digital things are permanent. Uh, in the Canvas announcement for this video, I'll have a link to the Big Blue Button support and tutorials. In a 2021 study by Yukoha, it concluded that Big Blue Button increases student engagement and interaction in online courses. In fact, they went so far as to call it a panacea for all that goes wrong in online education, which is basically that students can be distant and unengaged. I don't know if it's a panacea, but uh, maybe we'll find out from Dr. Sorensen and Dr. Cheek. They're going to talk with us today and give us some feedback on their use of Big Blue Button tool. But I know it's a really good tool. It's developed by educators for educators. It's easy to use. Uh, it's already in Canvas. We're hearing from faculty who use Big Blue Button that they like it better than Zoom. Uh, and most people who have become familiar with it really like it. It's definitely easy to use because it's already in the navigation tab in Canvas. Students can see in the Canvas calendar that there's something that needs to be done and they can just click on it and join in. So uh, with that, I'm going to hand this over to Regan White and he's going to show you where Big Blue Button is and uh, the basics of how to use it. Regan? All right, Todd, with your permission, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Absolutely. And I will uh, kind of walk us through the, the uh, process of setting a big, uh, big Blue Button conference. First of all, from the location here on the homepage of any Canvas class, if you'll look in the class navigational panel, uh, you should be able to see Big Blue Button somewhere in this list. It'll probably be uh, invisible, as you can see the little icon here, but you can still access it. If you click on the Big Blue Button link in the uh, navigational column, it will take you to a pretty simple page. Basically, you have new conferences, you have concluded conferences, and you have an add conference button. And this is the button that we'll use to get started with our new conference. New conferences can be scheduled, so you can schedule those uh, according to your calendar. Once you've concluded the conference and once the, the video has uh, had a chance to run through and to process, then the conferences will appear in, in the concluded conferences. And with our uh, premium subscription, your students can go back then and watch them over and over again for the, uh, the duration of their class anyway. So, all right, so uh, let's go ahead and click on the plus conference button to add a conference. And we're given some uh, parameters to fill out. Conference type, we don't have to worry about. Uh, you can name the conference, uh, anything you would like. I would recommend something uh, instructional, something that has to do with the lecture or whatever uh, you're, you're uh, presenting today. I'm going to call mine basically just test because I have no imagination. Duration in minutes, they're by default set to 60. Uh, I tend to, a little bit later, we're going to click on this no time limit button, and that will remove the duration in minutes. You don't have to worry about it. It can be shorter or longer. That's why I say use the no time limit. Uh, even if it's shorter than 60 minutes, it, it doesn't have any impact. Make sure that you have enable recording enabled, because if you don't, uh, you won't be able to record the conference and it will not um, be available to your students after the conference is over. You can enable waiting room if you choose. Basically, it gives your students an opportunity to join the conference before you get there and also add to calendar. I recommend using this because uh, it places the, the conference date like a, an assignment on the calendar. So I recommend using that. And then finally, a description you can add, whatever it is that the purpose of this conference is. And this is basically a tutorial. So that's what I'm going to put there. But you can put anything you want in that and then click the Create button. 
So now the conference is saved. You'll notice it appears in the new conferences. I don't have to start it immediately. Uh, I can if I wish to. If at some point in the future I decide I don't like this conference or I don't want to do it, I can come over here and I can delete it or I can change the settings on it. Uh, but at the point that I wish to start, before my students arrive, I'm going to click the start button. And this will take me to uh, the page that allows me to uh, begin the presentation. We want our students to participate. And so we want to make sure, and this is a thing you want to uh, inform your students, make sure you let them know in the instructions or verbally that they need to select the microphone setting, not just the headphones. Uh, it's possible if they are unable to access a device that will let them join this way, it's possible to use their phone. If you, uh, if you can't get into one of these and you click on use your phone, it will give you an 800 number or an 863 number to call. And then if you enter that pin, it will connect you to, uh, it'll connect you to the conference via your phone. But in this case, we're just going to, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, set up our sound. First of all, there we go. By the way, uh, you will need to allow. I tend to allow it on every visit just because uh, Big Blue Button is a, a trusted application. So you can you can use either one of these two. But if you don't allow it, then uh, you won't be able to be heard uh, during your conference. So you want to allow permission for Big Blue Button to use your microphone. It's going to start with this echoey effect. Uh, you can stop that by clicking the stop audio feedback. Basically, that just allows you to test your microphone. So make sure you have your default microphone set. Mine is a Yeti. Uh, don't, and this is this is a, a, a kind of a personal thing, but don't go with the default. It's a better idea to go through your list of microphones and pick uh, the microphone that you use. But don't just go with the default because sometimes that will fool you. Also, with the speakers, um, you want to use whatever speakers are associated with your computer, but uh, leaving the default is is a, is not a good plan. Once you've gotten those two settings made, then go ahead and click Join Audio. And now we have our audio established. Probably the next thing you'd want to do is start recording because that's the purpose of the, the big blue button is you're able to record. And so uh, if you click the Start Recording button, this will be generally when you start making your presentation, but you can go ahead and do it earlier. Click start recording and it will give you uh, the option to, uh, or it'll tell you how to pause it if you need to, but then it will let you say yes or no. And now the session is being recorded. If I had uh, students out there, they would get a notification that the session was being recorded. For video, um, there's a, a button down here this icon that says share webcam when you hover over it. If you click that, you'll be given the opportunity to attach your webcam. Now, uh, once again, you have to offer it permission. You have to uh, allow Chrome to use your webcam and to access it. So I'm gonna say allow. If you don't allow it, you won't be able to use your webcam. And then Chrome takes a few minutes to find your webcam. Now I have many webcams on my computer and the one that I'm gonna pick is the integrated webcam. This is the camera that's on my laptop. The reason that I'm picking this is because the other camera that I'm using is what I'm using to do this presentation on. And if I tried to pick it, it would not allow me to because it's already being used. So I'm gonna click on the integrated camera. You need to click on whichever camera you're using. Whatever camera that you're using, whether it's a, a USB webcam or whether it's built into your laptop, you need to select that camera. Click that link and it will take it a minute to connect, hopefully. I wonder if it didn't believe me. There we go. All right, you'll notice it's black. It's because my laptop lid is shut. But if, uh, if it were open, you'd be seeing my face in that picture. You can make whatever camera settings you need to change. I usually leave the quality on low because really and truly it's a very small picture. I'm not doing anything full screen with my camera. Yes, sir. Oh, your sounds on mute. I have a quite I have a question. Can you open your laptop so we can see you? Because this would be a Grayson College technical first. Give me one second. <laughs> see uh 
Yeah, because it's quite a technical achievement to have two video capture platforms going at the same time. Yeah. All right. There Not you go. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Uh, and okay. Actually, actually, if I had OBS open, I could show you several different views. Yeah. But for the moment, uh, that's, that is uh, my laptop sits on the side of my desk, kind of facing the door. Yes. So there's that. And then my uh, USB camera yeah. is up there. So there's that. I'm going to go ahead and close that if that's okay. Yeah. All right. That That's no mean feat, ladies and gentlemen, to have two online capture programs working simultaneously at the same time successfully. So well done. <laughs> yes. I'm so spoiled. I have all the good toys. <laughs> Regardless. Okay. So that is how you would, um, that's how you would set up your camera. And then when you click start sharing, it will, in fact, place the uh, it will place your uh, webcam scene at the top of the page, sort of like um, sort of like what Zoom does. It places previews up here, small small pictures. You can make this full screen if you wish. Uh, there's an icon down here uh, somewhere. One of these will will let you make uh, the the video camera. Oh, here it is. Uh, if you want to uh, make your picture full screen here. You can click on this uh, full screen button, and mm -hmm. it will do that. But for the most part, you're going to want to you're going to want to just share your screen. So you're not going to want to do that. Now, uh, speaking of screens, this white area here with all the icons on it, this is essentially an advertisement for Big Blue Button. They put it everywhere. You can get rid of it. Or you can move through it. They have uh, basically what this is is a slide deck. The first slide is for Big Blue Button, but once you uh, gone through that, then you have blank slides to use as a whiteboard. And uh, so essentially you can you can draw, uh, you can import pictures and text. Uh, you can do just about anything that you can do on a whiteboard with this. So if if you're lecturing and you want to uh, to use a whiteboard, uh, this is a good way to do it but you don't have to. In fact, what most people will do will be to share their screens, which I'll, I will show you next. Now, this may or may not work because I'm sharing a screen that's being shared, so it may get confusing here. But down in the bottom, once again, of these three icons, you can share your screen. You'll click that. And now you get to pick which screen you're going to share. I'm going to go ahead and share. Uh, let's see. I'm going to share my... Uh, canvas screen here. Now, when you do that, there are some options that you want to consider. Chrome tab will share just the Chrome tab that you're uh, that you want to share. Like I have several Chrome tabs open now. The one I'm selecting is web conferences, but there are several others that I could share. If one of those tabs plays audio and you have this turned on, then the audio will play through the presentation where it says also share tab audio. If you don't have it turned on, uh, and let's say you play a video or something else, then you won't be able to hear that except whatever your microphone picks up. So, And that's only for uh, the Chrome tab. So if you pull up another application that plays audio, they won't be able to hear that if you have this Chrome tab selected. Window uh, does the same thing. This will... Uh, this will not share audio at all, however. You see down here, it says to share audio, you either use a tab or use the, the whole screen. But uh, if you just select window, you can't share system audio at all. So I like to select entire screen and then system audio. That means anything your computer plays uh, will be will be audible over the, uh, over the presentation. If that makes any sense. So I'm gonna select that. I'm going to select screen two, which is the current presentation. I'm going to go ahead and share that. And now we should be able to see uh, my screen on your screens. I only see a small, basically what it is as is is an icon of it, but uh, you should be able to see that. Now, if I want to see my whole screen expanded, there's another expand video or expand screen share video icon up here that I can click on. And that will give me a larger view, but it also creates this really strange effect because well, I'm no, that... sharing a screen that's being shared that's being shared. 
That's yes. excellent. You, so you you've uh, achieved infinite regression on that. <laughs> really? That's another achievement, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh golly, this is a this is a landmark uh, tutorial here. We're going to have to definitely argue. Yeah, you're, you're killing it. You're killing it. Keep going. <laughs> okay, so at this point, then I can uh, I can do whatever it is that I need to do as far as my as far as my uh, presentation goes. Now over here, you'll notice. Uh, if your students need help, there is a public chat that's available. If you need to, uh, or if your students need to, they can add messages here. Oops. I'll demonstrate that. Oops, if I can spell. But more importantly, there is a help link up here at the top in the chat. And there's also uh, a repeat of the phone number. If you need to, uh, let's say one of your students loses internet or, or uh, they have a problem, their internet's not fast enough, then they can dial this phone number and they can enter this code and they'll be able to join this uh, presentation by way of the phone rather than um, watching it on a computer. Also, if you have another uh, student maybe that didn't get the announcement or uh, email got deleted or whatever, you can click on this link. This is to invite a guest and you can enter uh, or you can uh, rather copy this link and email it or message it to them or send it to them uh, in some way. And that uh, that person will be able to join the uh, presentation in progress. And they can just, they'll just pop right in. So uh, essentially that is the controls. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and minimize my presentation here or maximize rather. There we go. All right. So at the conclusion of your presentation, this is this is kind of a, 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 a tricky part here. Uh, first of all, I usually stop sharing my screen. I go back to the presentation board. And then here in the corner with the three dot menu, I click on the options. And uh, at this point, I'm uh, assuming that as I am the, the meeting uh, host, I'm going to end the meeting. Now, if you leave the meeting, then uh, basically they will, uh, a random person in the meeting will be given the host duties and they'll be able to end the meeting. But for the most part, the teacher or the instructor will want to end the meeting. And so you'll click on end meeting. And at that point, the, uh, the meeting will close and everybody will be booted from the meeting. And then we're going to end session for all. Uh, give them feedback. Everybody likes that. All right. So the session was ended by me and I'm going to press this button to go back to canvas. When I click, okay, it will take me back to canvas. And at that point I can go back to the big blue button icon here. And I'll see that I still have a conference in progress. I need to click end. I need to click this end button because if I don't, the video will never be processed and your students won't ever be able to watch it again. It'll just stay up here in progress forever. So click end. You sure you want to close it? Now it cannot be rejoined, but it has been moved down to the concluded conferences. The processing uh, that goes on for the video takes anywhere from a minute to 10 or 15 minutes. The way that you can check is to uh, occasionally hit the refresh button on your browser and it's getting closer now. See, it's added a little more text down here. As the video is processed, eventually there will be a link down here that will let us watch the video over and over again. So that's once you have this, uh, once you have the, the conference concluded, then after the video is processed, and like I say, it can take anywhere from a minute to 10 minutes. Uh, there'll be a link down here that says video in the uh, small text. And when your students click that, they can go back and rewatch the conference. That is, yes, sir. That's a, let's say that's a high priority video. Teachers mm -hmm. want students to see. Can they, can teachers copy that link and put it in an announcement for students? And they can, they can, you can copy this link and treat it like any other page or, or object in canvas. You okay. can post this into a, an announcement you can uh, paste it into a page if you want to add it to a lesson, uh, like a lesson page or an assignment. That's uh, I do that a lot. I put it into an assignment and say, all right, watch this video if you weren't there. And then you can do the assignment and still not have, you know, not have any difficulty. 
but I was really kind of hoping it would go ahead and do its thing here, but I don't guess it's going to. It may take it a little longer. We we did stay online for a little bit. Like I say, it, it, based on the length of the video, it can take a while to get this done. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, at that point, you're pretty much, uh, you've concluded what you needed to do. This is available, like as Todd said a while ago, because we have a, 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 a full membership rather than the free version, uh, it is permanent. This video is hosted in Canvas, and so we uh, we can keep it forever. And you can, uh, I believe, they'll even carry forward if you copy uh, if you copy the curriculum into the next class. So I believe that is the case. Yes, sir. I have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. Can you go over real quick how a teacher can enable Big Blue Button if they haven't done that before? Turn uh -huh. it on in settings. I can indeed. So quick, if you have me. if you have big blue button hidden like I do, you'll be able to use it, but your students will not. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of instructors want their students to be able to use it because they want them to build videos on their own, to build uh, video responses, and things like that. So in order to enable it, you need to activate it in the uh, class navigation column. So the first uh, thing you would do is click on settings. And when that link opens, we'll click on the navigation tab. These tabs at the top, the third one is navigation. Now, the things above this line are enabled. The things below the line are not. And so we want to go down below the line and find our big blue button icon, which is here. And if we click and drag, we can move it up above the line. Once we've done that, now big blue button is enabled, but we absolutely have to click on the bottom button that says save. A lot of times what will happen, especially if you just move it like this, you don't you don't see the bottom button and so you don't click it. And then when you go back to uh, your normal view, big blue button would still be disabled. So you want to save your changes. And then once you've done that, then when the page refreshes, you'll find that the big blue button is now enabled. And so your students have access to it so that when they click on it, they can also uh, add conferences. They can also make their own videos and send them to you. You can use this to uh, answer test questions. You can use it uh, to get help from or to get your students help if they need to ask questions. There's a lot of reasons why you would want your students to make videos. And this is the fastest, easiest way to do it. And it's also built into Canvas so they don't have to they don't really have to go out and incorporate any new software, learn any new systems. And, and if there's a video ready to be watched, they'll see that same join button. And they will. And okay. they will. If there's a if there's a conference up here that's that hasn't been run yet, then they'll see the join button and they'll be able to join it. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. We have uh, joining us today is Dr. Billy Cheek. Thank you, Billy, for coming in. And Billy, Billy has been a longtime user of Big Blue Button in the math department. Uh, Billy, uh, could you? How do you use Big Blue Button yourself and in the math department, or do you use it that much? So um, we were using it more, you know, as we were coming out of COVID, because um, we were we had kept our classes the same size, but then we had the room restrictions with the distancing. And so what we were doing was we were using big blue button simultaneously with teaching face to face. And we had split our classes half and half so that half were online and half were in the classroom on say the Monday. And then on the Wednesday we switched. And so that way students got equal time in the classroom and online, you know, so obviously they did half in person, half online, but we were using big blue button simultaneously while teaching to the face to face. So, um, for example, what I did with my statistics class was I used PowerPoint to display problems and to go over material. Um, I found that uploading that as a PDF worked better because with the PowerPoint with math notation, sometimes the big blue button didn't read the symbols that well. And so you would get some garbled PowerPoint slides. Uh, so it wouldn't upload necessarily well, but I found if I converted it to a PDF first, then it would display properly with no problems. And then I have a graphic tablet, so I would display it in the classroom 
Um, I would hide the attendance list on the screen to maintain the privacy of the students also so I could keep it fully projected um, mm -hmm. and I didn't have to like minimize it to see a chat or something. So what I did was I, I noticed she pointed out the phone number. And so teachers can use that phone number too to join if their audio, say, in the classroom is not working. Because there were some times, you know, you find that the projector, the audio goes out um, and you need to join uh, the conference. So I joined, I hid my phone, my caller ID so that my phone number didn't show up in the big blue button mm -hmm. and uh, just kept it muted. But I would keep the chat pulled up on my phone. Even if the audio was working in the classroom, I kept my my phone muted, but I kept the screen up so I could see the chat and I could monitor the chat on the side with my phone and still keep my main presentation fully maximized without having to shrink it to see questions. So it helped with the flow uh, doing the chat that way. And then, of course, I pulled the PDF up and advanced through the slides, just like I would through my PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. And I had a graphic tablet, which we now have tablets in all of our math classrooms. We just bought them so that all of our instructors have a tablet at the podium. But uh, before that, this was a couple of years ago, we didn't have those yet. So I have my own graphic tablet, a Wacom tablet with a stylus. And I just plug that into the computer and then I could write like the whiteboard feature, I just would uh, share this, you know, the the whiteboard, I would just import my document into that whiteboard in Big Blue Button, and then I could write on it with my graphic tablet. So um, I could just write right on it, color code it, you know, use the pen feature, I could use the shape feature if I needed a shape. Um, so I did that with all of the classes that I was teaching that needed uh, to have students big blue button and face-to-face -face simultaneously. So mm -hmm. um, then of course we we just reduced our caps um, so that we could fit everybody in to the classroom. Um, so after that, we weren't using big blue button in the classroom as much, but we use it as a conference tool on the side. So mm -hmm. if we have a student, you know, that say can't come to class, you know, after COVID we had students that were quarantined, we of course could pull them in to do Big Blue Button with them so they could still attend the, the class mm -hmm. um, and that way they wouldn't miss class. Um, but we could do it on the side, like if we wanted to do say an evening review session. So mm -hmm. for example, this semester with my dual credit statistics class um, at the high school, I am doing some evening review sessions so we can get in some additional review time. Mm -hmm. So I'll pull up that section, invite them to a big blue button conference, and then they can attend that. And I record anything that I work out so that if somebody, for instance, has an after school job and they can't attend, then they can go back and watch that recording later. Right. Nice. Um, so, yeah. So now just going back to using it more as just a side conference tool. Mm -hmm. um, I have also used it in the event that a student can't come to school to take a test, um, but the test needs, but they're well enough to test, you know, say somebody is quarantined under COVID, they can't come, they miss their testing window, they're not going to be able to come to the testing center to test in person. Mm -hmm. um, we have utilized it as a proctoring tool so that the instructor, we just have the students sit, you know, in their dorm or their room where nobody is around, we have them scan the room to show us that nobody's in the room. We have them show their workspace to make sure they don't have any extraneous papers out. Mm -hmm. um, we make approve of their calculator. We approve of, you know, what they're allowed to use during the test. Um, if they're allowed a formula sheet, like for statistics, we allow a formula sheet. We make sure they don't have anything written on it. We make sure that their notebook paper is clear of any writing before we start. So basically kind of like what Respondus does, you know, or Proctor U, you know, mm -hmm. it's a proctored session that's recorded mm -hmm. and the instructor monitors them and can notify them that, you know, if they're drifting out of the frame or, hey, you've moved, you know, we can alert them during the test so we can do like a good proctoring session and record it so that we have it recorded and just invite that one student to that so that is just there for them. So right. that way it's still private, but the instructor has a record. That doesn't happen very often anymore. That has become a very rare occurrence now, but it's still an alternative that can be considered if an instructor wants to do that. Um, otherwise, they can work with the student to get their test done some other way. 
Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, that's pretty rare. Most of the time it's just as a conference tool um, to either record something for the class. Um, I found out the hard way that you have to invite the students to the video for them to see the video later. And that, I don't know if that has changed, but when I first started using Big Blue Button, I thought, well, I'll just record a video for them. It doesn't need to be a live session, so I won't invite anybody. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't invite anybody and I recorded it. And then students were asking me, where is that video that you said you were gonna record? I'm like, well, it's right there under concluded conferences. And they're like, we're not seeing anything. And I had them send me a screenshot and they couldn't see it. Oh, so I found out that even though it's not gonna be a live session necessarily, you still have to invite students to the session so that they can view it later. Again, if that has changed, let me know. But um, I told students, you know, hey, I'm going to be recording this. You will be invited to it. But if you can't make it, I'm not really meaning it to be a live session, but I wanted you to be able to see the recording later. I, I, but I would welcome them say, if you are available and you want to pop in while I'm recording it, and yeah. ask some questions, feel free. But yeah. otherwise, I'll, I'll record it. You can watch it at your convenience later. So I kind of found out by trial and error on that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other than that, it works very well for recording. I like the statistics because um, as Regan mentioned, when the video is available, there'll be a link there, but there's also like a link for some video statistics. So you can pull that up and see what students participated and how long they were in the session. So that way, if you're using it for attendance or if somebody says they watched it, you can go back and say, well, you were in there for five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a good tool for instructors right. as well. Yeah, so that is something that I have seen recently. Um, it that has I don't think that had always been there. If it had, I just hadn't used it. But I, I use it, you know, now that it's there, I noticed it popped up. So I clicked on it. I was like, well, what is this? And it's a good little uh, analytic tool. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you can check students activity and interaction in the course and other ways in Canvas. Um, but that would be a subject for another video. Um, but the big blue button uh, works great as a, a conferencing tool. You can invite selective students to it. You don't have to invite everybody. Um, so if you wanted to meet with just an individual student, then you could invite just that one student mm -hmm. and have an individual tutoring session or invite a group of students and do a particular group session. So it's very flexible that way. So I find it very useful and very flexible. And then the recordings are great after so students can still watch it. Excellent. Um, mm -hmm. Big Blue Button marketed itself as an easy to use tool. That's why they first called it Big Blue Button because there was a metaphorical blue button to push and that was it. Do you do you find that it's easy to use more or less for your you or your department? Yeah, for, for the purposes I've uh, heard, you know, good things about it. I encourage people to use it. Mm -hmm. um, the only drawback that I've seen is, and this may have changed too, is when we do those recordings originally, they were only there for 14 days. Yeah, right. So is that still the case? No, we have premium level now, so they, they're permanent. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and then is it capable to migrate that from one course to another? I heard Regan say something about you could copy a link. So yeah. would that link, like if you recorded something this semester and you were teaching it again in the fall, you would be able to copy that link into the course. It would just have to be in an announcement. Mm -hmm. my or, or, or we could create like a wiki page maybe with all those links on it. Yeah. And then students could go to that page and click on those links and they can still see that. OK, that's excellent because that used to yeah. not be the case. And I started recording in YouTube just so that I could keep my videos in perpetuity because yeah. originally they were wiped out after two weeks. Right. So if they're now permanent, that's awesome. So that makes it even more useful. Yeah. Um, the only other thing that I've heard about from instructors that they wish it had was they wish it had picture in picture mm -hmm. so that while they're doing their session, the students could see the instructor like in a minimized window, like a picture in picture. Mm -hmm. um, I remember at the beginning of the semester, Regan, uh, y'all had mentioned that that screen pal screen recorder did picture in picture. So I recommended that to those instructors mm -hmm. that wanted to have the picture in picture. Um, but I've only heard one instructor mention that. So it's not a widespread issue. Uh, it would be a nice feature. So if you ever get to submit ideas to them, yeah. 
that would be a nice one to recommend because when we do a welcome video, it's nice for students to see, especially if it's an online class, mm -hmm. uh, for them to see our face while we're recording. So then they can put a face to a name and um, not just have a, a, a voice a voiceover only. So it would be a nice feature. But aside from those things, it does work great. It mm -hmm. is very easy to use. Um, it's flexible as to who you want to invite. Um, mm -hmm. You just have to make sure anybody you want to see it later that they do get invited to it. Right. Um, and then I recommend that my students go into their settings and set their notifications on those on the invitations and yeah. on the recordings. So that way they get notified immediately when they're invited to one of the conferences because they don't always do that. So if a, a teacher is going to invite them, I would post an announcement mm -hmm. and just say, you know, hey, I've set up this big blue button for this day and this time you have been invited mm -hmm. um, and then remind them to go in and set their notifications and then set them for recording ready. And I also send out an email after the recording is ready just to make sure everybody's notified and remind students again uh, through Canvas inbox that their recording is ready and in order to to see the notifications, you can do such and such. And I give them the directions there again. Okay. Um, so that helps the process. If uh, an instructor lets them know when the recording is set up or the session set up and when the recording is ready. And then if we remind them to set those notifications for themselves, mm -hmm. then it flows easier. Um, then the students will see the invitation and then they'll see when the recording's ready and then they can go right to the recording and watch it any time. So I know students enjoy that because they can pause it, they can go back over parts and it really does help. Uh, supplement their learning to to get that so and especially in an online class the more in, increased presence that an instructor gives in their course is going to be better for the students right. and big blue button really does help with that and it's been versatile with uploading documents or just using the whiteboard uh, the whiteboard has a good amount of tools um, that are have been useful um, I don't think I've noticed anything that I've tried to do that it didn't have, you know, so for what I've needed to do, it's, it's had everything so that I've needed. So um, I would, I would highly recommend it for everybody. Nice. Hey, Todd, if I could share my screen again, real quick, I have, a, I have one more thing. Okay. Let sure. me go ahead and, and share this back again. All right. So looking at, can you guys see that? Not uh, yet. No, you can't. Okay. Yeah, there it is. All right. So uh, if you'll so my conference is concluded now and uh, you'll notice I have the, the links down here that we can look at. If you'll look next to the video link, there's a little uh, little screen with a little arrow icon. If you click on that, this um, this URL, you can distribute this URL to anybody. You can copy that and send it out or make a link into Canvas onto a page. And that will let anybody watch the video. Mm -hmm. And so wow. then once they watch it, then they'll be able to see it. So that that's how you would share it with people that weren't registered or or hadn't. Uh, you mm -hmm. can just make a link from that from that address, and that will take them just. Uh, it's not into Canvas. It's actually on BlindSideNetworks.com. Mm -hmm. It's on their uh, site. So uh, anybody can watch that. They don't have to be in. They don't have to be in Canvas. So, so if, if Billy wants to show a video to next semester to students that weren't in this class, is that the, is that what she? She should, she should be able to copy this this link, and she should be able to show that regardless of whether they're in her class in Canvas or whether it was last year's class. Uh, as and as far as I understand it, our videos are permanent. So mm -hmm. it should, it, that link should be good from, from now on. Now that I have not tested, but uh, um, I'm going to, in fact, right now with this, with this video, I'm going to test that very thing. So yeah. but, uh, as far as I understand it, this video link should let anybody watch it. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. And I saw the link that you posted in the chat and I've yeah. bookmarked that to read. Uh, okay. So I appreciate that. Sure. I guess over the years, we'll see what digital permanence means. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, the last thing I want to mention is uh, the premium support gives us the permanent permanent videos and premium level support. So I have in the chat, I have the 
support for blindside networks. You can always ask Regan or I, we're going to be able to ask most questions, but you can also go to premium support and I'll include that in the canvas announcement in this video. So Billy, thank you very much. Your expertise yes. was very helpful and your comment and your experience with using that tool. I've really liked big blue button over the years and I'm glad to hear that uh, you're getting some use out of it. Yeah, absolutely. You're very welcome and I'm happy to contribute. Um, right. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Any other comments, Regan? Anybody? Good. All right. Thank you very much. See you next time. Great. Thank you. Okay. So working with Big Blue Button was not something I planned to do. I showed up at a dual credit high school location uh, 10 minutes early and learned that I had a number of students who had been put into in-school suspension. And immediately I thought of using Zoom, but Zoom requires that a parent sign permission if a student is 16 or younger than 16. So I thought, how old are my juniors? And I thought seniors 17, 18, juniors 15, 16, uh-oh, I might need parental permissions that I can't get. So then I remembered Big Blue Button and I had not used it in a long time. So when I turned it on, it worked like a charm because it's all integrated with Canvas. The students, not only did they not need parental permission if they were younger than 16, they had a link in the calendar and they were already familiar with the Canvas calendar. So even if they didn't know to click the big blue button link, they could see they had something to do. Uh, they logged right in and of course they were in in-school suspension for a number of classes after that first one. Mm -hmm. So I continued to record the classes and of course they're saved right in Canvas, right in big blue button. And then I met with uh, Regan just mm -hmm. because I hadn't used it in a long time. And he said, well, before the meeting, you should watch this 15 minute video to see all of its features. And, and I thought, I know all of its features. I used it years ago, but I didn't. Big Blue Button has come a long way. It has learning analytics. It has all kinds of breakout room sessions. Uh, it has whiteboards that we always had, but they're enhanced now. In other words, Big Blue Button looks more like a conferencing tool for education than Zoom does. Mm -hmm. So there are reasons to prefer Zoom. If you wanted to keep a recording for a long time, I didn't see where Big Blue Button would permanently save it outside that Canvas shell for my continued use. But mm -hmm. in teaching a class and working with students, they don't need additional software. I, I can share uh, my screen with them. You can transfer and you can really manage the way you would manage a classroom. So for many reasons, I think Big Blue Button would be a better choice than Zoom. And then you were telling me, Todd, that Big Blue Button, uh, we pay for a higher level of support service. Mm -hmm. And and again, that's nice. If you're having questions, uh, not only is Regan available, but also they have their own help desk and will give us additional assistance where we're just another Zoom user. Yep. So for all those reasons, I think, Looking at Big Blue Button is worth people's time. Yeah, nice. Did your students uh, struggle? Did you have any struggling with it once they started using Not it? Not at all. I mean, they they just logged on and it worked. Mm -hmm. And they right. didn't even get training on how to log on. Right, nice. The, the nice. person who facilitates at the high school just went into the in-school suspension room and said, your class is in Canvas, find it. Yeah. Nice. And yeah, they've been using Canvas and they were familiar, so there was no no learning curve to it at all. Nice. Ah, good. Good to hear. Awesome. Any questions you had, Regan? Uh, no, other than to say, um, Gene, they do have now, because we have the, the enhanced subscription, uh, we do have a, a permanent copy of the videos. So oh. if you uh if you want to uh see those, I'll send you a I'll send you an email on how to get into them, but basically it'll let you carry it over from class to class. If you want to keep that conference for uh, later classes in the year or whatever, 
it will let you do that. If you want to send it to students that didn't get to watch it and that didn't get signed up for it, it will let you do that. You can just send it. You don't have to send them through Canvas. It just creates a link to the big blue button side, actually. And when ah. you send them that, then they can watch the video. Okay. Yeah. Better than I thought. Thanks. And then on the Canvas announcement for this video, I'll, I'll include the link to the uh, Big Blue Buttons premium support. Although for the most part, probably just contact Regan and I will probably be answer, able to answer 95% of the questions. Uh, but you can also contact Blue, Big Blue Button support. And so far we've been able to answer them all. I've never had to use our support, but um, if we can't answer it, we would definitely escalate it to that premium level support. So 